This is the governor of Puerto Rico who is presiding over the default and perhaps um, you know other financial uh, complications of Puerto Rico. I recall before he was uh, the, the governor, uh, he was elected to one of the houses in Puerto Rico. I went to his office uh, after President Obama had visited and you know liaison with him and so on. I said, look, man, I think that you're going to be the next governor here. And um, I'd like to join the party. I would like to work with you and so on. Well, he wanted to get the papers from the party to his office for me to sign in there. I said, so okay, I'll go down to the headquarters. When I went over there, they don't even want me to go into the building. Um, they don't even want to, you know, give me the papers to sign up to become a member. And um, I recall once I took an, some ideas in and I'd signed the Dr. Morris at the bottom. So the lady asked me, who is this? I said, it's me. So after she saw that I'm a doctor and all that, they, she, the next time I went back to see her, she turned and bent over and showed me her butt and, you know, just ignoring me and all that. Um, so once I used to hang out by a restaurant, you know, recycling. And this restaurant is um, to the beach. There's a re another restaurant in the middle and to the end of the alley or to the, this uh, little lane is the headquarters um, of this party that uh, Padilla is supposed to be the uh, leader of. And you would visit the restaurant often and I would see him and say, hello, governor, next governor, the Proximo, go be in that door. And he said, you think I'll be governor? You know, he wasn't even sure and so on. I said, sure. And I keep calling him governor and so on. I must have seen him as about 10 times. Now, at the, I went to his party um, eventually and I met the people who were dealing with the issues in this campaign. So I give them a couple of issues, maybe about 10. I heard him, you know, talk about a few and so on. And uh, I was supposed to go back to give them some more. But I said, no, why don't we have a conference and I'll present my ideas and you present yours and so on and so forth. They don't want that. They want me to give them the ideas and just stay in the background. No, my life in Puerto Rico is very impoverished. And I was hoping to see if I could get some status and be able to help out the Puerto Rican government because I think that... Uh, I'm an expert in, you know, bringing countries out of um, this kind of situation Puerto Rico's in. And as a matter of fact, I went over there to test an idea I had. I thought that being a small nation and in the Caribbean and, and you know, and so on, we are both Caribbean people, etc. You might listen and so on. My plan was that um, we will ask the citizens to come up with some funds every month, probably contribute third to fifth dollars. And uh, this fund will be used to fix the environment, bridges, roads, uh, sewer, a whole bunch of other things. And um, we could have kicked it off there and then it could come to the mainland where other states now seeing it working in Puerto Rico might adopt it and, and the president might you know, endorse it and then we go forward in uh, building the nation. This was just a major thing I went on there to try uh, as well as I want to study law over in Puerto Rico. Uh, it was very cheap, but I didn't understand that it was so poor over there that you can't even raise um, the, the, the fees to pay for school. I mean, it's half of what is in this mainland here, but oh Lord, there's no money over there. Okay. So, um, in the, at his inauguration, I went over there to, saw, uh, to see him and I congratulated him. I said, thank you, sir. You know, you did well. Great to be governor and so on. I said, but well, you know, I'd like to meet with you to discuss some ideas and so on. And this man almost vomit. I said, oh my God, I can't believe this. I mean, this guy knows me. I went to his office, we talked. Uh, I mean, I've called him governor so many times. I went to his office, gave him some issues. I heard him talk about a few of them. I mean, why is he going to treat me like this? I said, you see, this day, I'm out of Puerto Rico. I'm leaving today. I'm, I'm going to make a, a book a flight today and I'm out of here. I did book my flight and I left Puerto Rico. Um, Puerto Rico is in bad shape. Um, you, you see, the people who represent Puerto Rico in Washington generally tell the Puerto Ricans, look man, I have the type of clout and status and privilege and so on that I could, you know, inter, uh, interact with the big shots in Washington, people that, are, that matter. And I will get more funds to come down to Puerto Rico so we could take care of business. And that's the person who uh, they will elect, the one that they believe is going to get more money into Puerto Rico. Whereas I thought that Puerto Rico being uh, a United States territory and has access to the market, we could have 
you know done business get people to come in and invest and so forth and get a, a quick run on the market as opposed to you know producing overseas and have to go through tariffs and the other barriers to get into the market and so many other ideas i had that i'm sure that could have put put, put puerto rico in a better place but um you know puerto rico is strange um you know they don't seem to appreciate black folks you don't see black people in puerto rico um holding important positions visible positions um and, and the funny thing with Puerto Rico and other Latin countries is that their their race or their type of people is a, is a mixture. In college in 1978, when I did Spanish for the first time, uh, we studied a book called uh, La Cultura de Mexico. And an important concept in this book was this. La sangre de Latino is un mezcla de uh, sangre de indio, de negro y europeo. In other words, uh, the Latin American person, his blood is a mixture of black, white, and native Indian. And they all ignore the black. They, they, they don't just like to know that they have black in them. I listened to a guy from Mexico. He was saying that we, you know, we Latinos, you know, we are a mixture of native Indian and white people. And I waited to hear him say blacks because I know that and and he used to I used to call him king he used to operate very arrogant and with a lot of charisma and, and ethos and all that and I'm saying after he ignored that left out that important part the black part I said this guy is an idiot and, and I just you know dismiss him as it were and in Puerto Rico um, if well one guy told me he said listen when are women pregnant we, we just not sure what type of child we can have whether it's going to be black it's going to look white or it's going to look you know uh, chino to call him like a native indian person or chinese or you know asian type looking person and um when a family has a black in it or say a parent a grandparent or somebody's black they're hid you know when 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 visitors come if it's a grandma or a grandpa that's dark skin they got to be in the back room while only light skin ones in front and you know you know so on so they, they seem to have a tradition of ignoring black so when i went over there and i'm trying to liaison with this governor guy now and trying to help him to put puerto rico in a better place he just ignoring me in other words uh he knows that i'm you know qualified and professional and whatever and i'm gonna come with some good ideas i don't know if anybody told him that but i'm gonna just work for free I'm going to give them all these ideas and they're going to put Puerto Rico, you know, make it a first world country and something. And I can just be living, uh, you know, on Skid Row and, 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 and eating from missions. No, 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 no. The only way I would have stayed in Puerto Rico and helped this guy is if he would have recognized me. I got a position that I have some income that I could relax and I could take care of business. I could do what I want to do. And I have enough leisure to, you know, dream and, and, and work with bringing them up you know i mean no i'm not gonna do that so uh, i think that their financial problems don't have to be this severe but it's just that they're not training themselves to um run a business as it were like a like some of these states up here in america um they just want to you know get loans and america guarantee it and love money from america and spending money crazy one of the fastest growing um jobs in puerto rico is security you could become either state um county i don't think state or city police and um join the you know the, the national guard over there so what they do they allow crime to get out of control tell america look so crime is out of control here we need to hire some more police and so when they graduate classes these guys know that as long as they don't rock the boat on stone they're gonna be having a career until they you know die or retire and, and everything is gonna be good um the perks of you know uh, corruption or whatever um and so you know as i said i lived in puerto rico and i'm not surprised that this is where they at i mean they, they're not serious i mean he and others um, prefer probably um, for them to become um, a, a, a kind of country to be independent and to leave America this is what some of them thinking of and I'm gonna make another video on that but uh, you know they, they, they don't respect black folks and and uh, as I said I could have helped this uh, governor here and I'm sure 
that they would have been in a better position today for the last two years that I would have been working with him. But no, I just left, man. I'm not going through that with this guy.